Hello beautiful souls! Today I'm gonna do a book review for this book. I had this book for a while and I don't know, I, I had so much fun doing the last book review. Um, what was the name of the book? I forgot the name of the book, but the last one that I did, but I wanted to do this one. I went through my books to see which one I wanted to do next and this book, I think it came out in 2012, um, 2012, 2013, something like that. And I found the book back then to be quite useful because I was going through a lot of teachings in Creole. I was getting a lot of information on in, in the dream in Creole. And I was like, what is going on? So I got the book and I thought it was pretty useful back then um, when I first got it because it really um, explained some things that I was listening in Creole, like I was being t uh, talked to in Creole and uh, the names of the spirits in Creole. And that was hard because my grandmother didn't know anything and, and you know, she only speaks Spanish and I was like having a hard time going through understanding some of the names and what they meant and I thought well you know I should just get a book a few of those books um that come from the Haitian side of the island um this is Mambo Chita Tan she she went to in the book she explains that she went to Haiti to go through some of the teachings and initiations before she wrote the book so i'm not going to go through the first part of the book because i think you know um the history also talks about the history of id and give us a little bit of the background of the africans that made it to the island so maybe i should just go so you guys can see what she has here so the first part of the book is talking about it um talking about the origins, the the confusion that there might be, the the history of it, the Taínos that were there, how they have influence, um, Haitian Buru, and um, let's see. Then she goes into talking about is Buru a religion, and how Haiti and Haitian Buru came to be. So she goes through that, but that's not obviously my favorite part because all of that I already had information on. I already, you know, I come from the island. So to me it has always been interesting because I always felt very connected to the Haitian side of the island. And even when I, wor when I was working in the hotel industry, um, those connecting to those um haitian um managers or even my boss one of my boss was haitian and we developed such a strong relationship and i remember like l learning wanting to learn to speak creole but never making the effort because i was too lazy but i always love to make jokes in creole because you know it, it, i just always felt very connected but anyway so I knew a little bit of that story. So I'm going to start with, let's see where I want to start. I think I'm going to start with the, so she goes over explaining the alto. She goes over to explain uh, Bondier and the universe. Bondier is the good God. And she talks about the Luat, who are they? And then she talks about ethics in Buru and confusion and controversies in Buru, Haitian Buru compared to Luciana saying, um, not saying to Luciana, um, Luciana versus Haitian Buru and the confusions and controversies of that. You know, so basically Haitian Buru compared to Huru um, and the fact that it's not then this and that. So New Orleans Buru compared to Haitian Buru and the sacrifices in Buru. Oh wait, I don't remember. Anyway, so um, she talks about that. Let me just see, when she talks about the sacrifices in Buru, she addresses the large confusion and controversy that outsiders of the tradition would confront. 
the nature of sacrifices, particular animal sacrifice, the Lua or Haitian Buddha requests many things as offering or gifts as part of their ceremony and services. Like in my side, like we don't do sacrifices. So I'm, I don't remember reading this when I, when I first got the book. Um, but she talks about animal sacrifices in Buru, the, the oils, the perfume, the mirrors, and all of that. And then she goes into the zombie, the Buru dolls, and trans and possession, trans and how that happens, outsiders in Buru, Catholic symbolism in Buru. And then to the part that I want to talk to you about today. Um, the nations of the Loa. She talks about the Rada, the Rada spirits, the Petro spirits, and other type of spirits, the Gede spirits, and some others. Um, she talks about the Mete, the master of the head, um, serving the Loa, how it is done. She talks about spirit marriage. So this is where I want to start. So the spirit marriage... Yeah, this is where we want to start. This is page 90 in the book. And I haven't read the book in a very long time, but I do have sticky notes of the ones that I think is most interesting. So I will read that because I haven't read it in a long time. And I don't, you know, like I I, I think you'll understand what I'm trying to do. Um, because what I'm trying to do is, like if you're really interested in learning more about the Haitian Buru part of it, this will be a, a good book. It's very, actually very good book. I do recommend it for those that want to learn more about that. It helped me with the Haitian names because I didn't have the Haitian names of the book, of the different Luases. So it was actually very good for me for that. But in my dreams, when I get those names in different languages, it's very confusing. So that's why I got it. Um, but here, um, somebody recently asked me about the, the marriage of the spirits and I thought that it was interesting that I found this today after going through the books that I wanted to talk to you about because I have forgotten I have this book and here she talks about how the spirit, the Lua, will normally tell the, the person, the priest or priestess that they want to marry and you know, in my side, we don't do that. We don't do um, marriages like that. But in the, it is more common now for Dominicans to start. I have seen it more commonly in Dominican Republic, but this is something that I think happens more often in Haiti. Um, the marriage of the Luad, here she says, uh, the marriage Luad is exactly like what it sounds. It's a marriage with the Luad, with the spirit. And she's talking about being a marriage contract. And there is a recession, there is cake, there is champagne. Just like if you marry someone, but this is with a spirit, with a loi. So normally the person doesn't really ask the spirit. It's the spirit that has to ask the person to, to accept the marriage. And if the person accepts, they have a full wedding with a recession, cake and everything. And it is also consecrated in the spirit dimension um in the dream dimension meaning when we go to sleep we can consummate that by allowing the energy to come through and i guess that <laughs> i hope you know what i mean so let me just see if i can read this for you so they enter into a spiritual binding marriage uh, with a human and there are many benefits to this um, according to her, um, a human who marries a Lua must obtain from sexual contact or even sleeping in the same bed with another human being on the promised night. Instead, sleeping alone in a special room of their, you know, whatever special room they decide that is going to be the room for the Lua um, in their homes. And it is set aside just for that purpose. Um, and they have to prepare the offerings and the other things that the spiritual spouse needs. Um, starting with the wedding, the wedding night, the human spouse will consummate the marriage with the Luat. And you will then continue to visit and enjoy spousal benefits with the Lua spouse in dreams. And no time is the consummation of a marriage Luat 
performed between the human and the horse that was possessed by that law. This consummation occurs on a spiritual basis during the human spouse's dream state. There is no ritual sex in Haitian voodoo, just as one will not have sex at a Catholic wedding mass, one does not have sex in a marriage rua ceremony, at least not until after the human bride or groom has gone to sleep on the wedding night and only in dreams. So it's a, it's um, you know, sexual, sex, sexual relationship that happens in the dream state, and I think we all have learned about how some of these things happen. So I don't know. I don't think anybody will be super surprised, but this happens in the Haitian Buddhist more commonly than in the Dominican side. At least in my lineage, it doesn't happen at all. But everybody's different, and I, and you know, and I, I like to every house, every temple, every house decides based on the the elders of that house how things are going to be done. In my case, that is not done, but in many other places it is being done where there is a spiritual marriage that has to be um it has to be respected and it has to it's like a relationship but with the spirit anyway so for the person this is for the person that was asking me about the the marriage the spirit marriage um that i wanted to mention this because i just saw it in here and we have had a conversation small conversation about this but um and it's only two pages that she goes to talk about the spirit marriage this the page nineteen ninety one for the most part and then she goes on to another topic um and she's saying that the most commonly married luat are Ersili Freda and Ersili Dantot for men all Almost always both as these luat are intensively competitive and do not like if one of them has more men than the other. And various members of the Ogu as co for women. Women who marry an Ogu usually end up also marrying a cooler lua, such as the Bala Wedo, Medawe, Kausin Saka, or a combination of these three to balance out the fairy nature of the of the Ogu. Because you know they're good, are warriors, so they can be very, very intense, very um, fiery. So that was that, and then she goes into the Rada Lua. This is uh, most of my spirit guides, most of the ones, the Luases that I work with or that they work with me, are from the Rada, are Rada Luases, and the Rada. She goes to explain some background information about the Radha and then she goes into um, the order of the Radha service and then she mentions a few of those Radha Luases. Um, Papa Lebag, of course, Marasa, Papa Loco, Ayi San, um, Mea Gue, Dambala Wedo, Ogu Batala, then so and so on. So she goes over and then give us a pretty good paragraph on who they are. For example, Dambala Wedo, she explains he's the, the great white snake spirit of the city of Wedo. And she goes through, um, it's, it's a good sized paragraph for each of those, um, those aluases. So maybe I should give you an example so you can see. So for example, Papa Loco, Papa Loco or Loco Atisu. Um, some say Papa Loco. Um, it's not crazy, just by the way, because I know some people think it means Loco like crazy. Papa Loco, L-O-K-O, -O, let's just call it like that. It's the spirit of the very first voodoo priest. Others say he's the spirit of the of associate, associate ancestral land upon which Hugans and Mambos are dedicated. These are the priests and priestesses. Uh, he's also said to be or alive in the Potomitan, in the middle of the pole in a pers uh, in a persistion, peristion around which all of the dances go and go around, which all the ceremonies are conducted as a preserve. Personification of the Potomitan, Papalo co-holds up the roof of the Buru, and he is specially honored by Hugans and Mambos that own or use his son, which is the ritual rattle, 
We honor Papa Loco with the image of Saint Joseph, the patient worker who raised um, Jesus Christ, um, who raised the child, um, the Christ child, the Christ child, in his own and what? Who raised the Christ child as his own and is the traditional protector of the church. So she's saying that he's syncretized with Papa Loco with Saint Joseph. Yeah, I do have a very special connection with Papa Loco. I did, when Papa Loco was coming through, I did have tons, tons of dreams, tons of information coming through in the dream state with St. Joseph. So this is, um, you know, I don't, I, don't, I don't know anything compared to anybody, right? Like, I don't know anything. I like to say that I, I don't really know anything, but I do know that when Loco came, um, it was St. Joseph who was coming in first to give me a lot of information. I guess maybe because I didn't understand who Loco was in, in, in you know, like in the, in, in my lineage, we just call, we just call him St. Joseph. We don't, we don't use another name. So for me to, um, to get Loco, I wasn't getting it. I wasn't understanding. So I, I was receiving a lot of information with, um, St. Joseph. And then later, when I heard um, Papa Loco, is actually when I went to find this book. So, this, you know, it, it's only one paragraph, but it helped me to understand the synchronization because at that point in my life, I was very confused and receiving so much information. Nothing was making sense. So this book actually was very helpful to me when I got it. Um, then she talks about Aisan I San, I San which is the wife of Papa Loco. And here she's talking about, just because I started with the Loco, let me just continue here. So Aisan I San is the wife of Papa Loco, and it is sometimes called the first mambo. She's generally only approached during council ceremonies as the owner and keeper of the Jebod or ritual uh, secretion space, temple of palm fronds. Are, are especially sacred to her. Sometimes Aisan is depicted as a old woman who owns the market and the concepts of economy and commerce. Much of the time, Aisan is not given a saint's image and she's embodied in the sacred palm fronds used in initiation ceremonies. In those situations where she's giving an image, it is sometimes the image of the silent by strong Saint Clair of Messina. So, she does have pretty cool, um, useful information here. Then she talks about Ida Weido, Sobo, Mbade, Agasu, Metawe, Tawoyo, Metawe, Tawoyo, La Siren, Resulifera, Daome, Bosua, Asaka. And then she goes into the Nago division with um, Ogun Asai, Aosani. Osanjay, sorry, Osain, Osanjin, oh, so many names. Uh, Ogu Batala, Ogu Sanjak, Ogu Badagri, Ogu Ferrai, Ogu Ashade, Ogu Shango, Ogu Balenjo, and so on. And then she goes into the Petro Division. The Petro Division is the Petro of the, um, f you know, very fire, very intense, very wire like. They're like, they're ready to get a job done. They're very, very in intense. And these are the, the Petro are those that really originated, um, if we can call it like that, originated in a, in ID because they needed to defend themselves from what was going on with the, with the slavery situation. So a lot of the spirits are said to be born there. Um, like, do I believe that they were born there? No, I do not believe that they were born there, but I do believe that's where the energy amplify. And that is my opinion. That doesn't mean that is true. So she talks about Papa um, Lebac Petro, the Marasa Petro, Simbi Lo, Mekafu, Ersili Danto, Grand Bois. I do have a connection with Grand Bois and a lot of the Petro um, Luases. So, but most of my spirits um, team come from the Radar Division. But I do have Petro in, and Gede in there too, and some of the others. So, but, you know, but I think um, the information here is pretty cool. 
she talks about the Gede Luas, the cemetery Luas's uh, Grand Baron and all of those fake Gede. Um, all the Barons, Mama Brigitte, um, Gede Plumage and so on. And then she talks about other Luas's and some of those Luas's, she talks about the um, Point Show and some of the ones that are considered slaves, um, like Luas's that lower um let me let me just see this so i don't give you i, I want to quote her because this is not this is her book this is not my book right so the some of the the these laws that are part of the patron nation some other seems to be outside of the traditional voodoo structure you may have read about the job the job um is djab job Point Show or Point Achet or um, Point Oshtain. Oshtain. Same thing. The, these are called Devils or Hope Points um, or Both Points. They have an energy. Um, they It's almost like a focal energy that you can use for your benefit, but they are considered slave spirits. Um, so, She's talking about these are Luas or other lesser spirits that have been enslaved and are sold to others to serve their new masters for eternity. Maybe you have heard about the Amwamo, Amwamo, um, sending the dead um, ceremony where a magician sends the spirit of an angry dead person to harm a living one. You have probably heard about the Sampuet, Sampuet. A secret society whisper about in books and movies like The Serpent and the Rainbow that kidnaps people in the night or turns them into zombies, the living dead. You recognize the names like Baron Criminel and some others, right? Uh, and she's saying that it's no, the reasons for this is not just because Buddhist, Buddhist, Buddhists are not just telling you. Uh, so she's saying, Many experienced Buddhist, Buddhist aunt choose not to work with dangerous spirits, even if they know how, simply because dangerous things are well dangerous. And these spirits are not dangerous in a way that your mother used to tell you that if you went swimming too soon after eating, you might get stomach cramp. These are generally, generally dangerous, capricious, demanding, and hard to handle spirits. So she's warning again, Anyone using those type of spirits for anything because then you might not be able to control them properly. So she's saying that most people don't really do this, but they do assist. So you do have to be careful not to work with something like this. And that was a big warning for some of you that are very curious out there. If you are lucky, dangerous Luat will just ignore you if you try to communicate with them. If you're not so lucky, something worse could happen. Some of the dangerous Lua will automatically harm those they consider strangers in their nature. It is just their nature. Just because you really want to pet a, a dog doesn't mean that it is going to be a good idea to stick your hand through the gate and hope for the best. Uh, I debated including information about the dangerous Lua at all in this book. As some, po as some people might interpret the author saying, don't do it as a dare to go right ahead. But I felt that I will not be able... I will not be responsible if I did not at least make and explain my warning. So she's warning people to be careful not to work with this type of hot um, devil-like energies that are sometimes people using to slay. They are energy. They are luases that are that you command them. But the thing is that if you don't know how to do that and you shouldn't be doing and you shouldn't be doing that but if you don't know how to do that you could end up in a lot of trouble then she talks about the haitian um buddha ceremonies and rites of passages and she talks about magic initiation and divination and she goes forward to explain the different type of initiations and divination but i wanted to read this one about the divination because a lot of people think that Divination is just like when we're doing tarot or reading the coffee or throwing the coconut or something like that. But 
a lot of the divination happens for the different priests and priestesses in the dream. So the dream stay is very crucial. Haitian Buru uses many forms. She says in page 131, Haitian Buru uses many forms of divination and clairvoyance. Dreams are perhaps the most common for Buddhists used uh, from Buddhists used to predict the future or understand messages from Bondié, the ancestors, the Luat, and other spirits. Some Buddhists are said to have eyes and can see, simply see various spirits and communicate with them about a person's questions, or they can cry for divinatory results using a glass of water and a candle, or reading the smoke that comes of a lamp or a cigar. Um, many Buddhists use cards to, divin to divine, but instead of the tarot or fancy cards used by many people outside of Haiti, they simply use uh, standard playing cards dealt out with even rules or different things, like the basic simple ones that I use for like the Spanish ones, the playing game. Um, in some parts of Haiti, African methods of reading sticks, bones, or the conditions of sacrificial animals have survived in some family traditions. Some Buddhists dispense with the visionary tools or their own biases, although altogether and simply consult directly with the Lua by speaking to the Lua during a possession. And then she goes into serving the Lua, how to do that, how, how, what is the meaning of a Buru ceremony and all of that, the food that some of the Luas like, the drinks. And, and then she goes about talking about Haitian Buru magic and lamps, how to make some of the lamps. And then she talks about the Buru family initiation and practice and the Buru house of the, or the Societe. Societe. Um, she talks about the Asson lineage, um, has so many dreams with the, with the Asoguet, um, in, in, in Creole, um, dreams where a lot of information comes in, in Creole about, um, this, the Asson lineage and it's, it's particularly the Asoguet, which is the highest rank of the Haitian Buru priesthood in, in the Asson lineage. And this is considered the ultimate clergy ranking Haitian Buru by most Haitians, regardless of the lineage. Traditions um, state that the Asogwe priesthood derives in its authority directly from the ancient royal house of Dahomey. A Mambor who got or who gone Asogwe is expected to know and serve all the Luas of the Guinea in addition to his or her method and lineage and to serve the people of the Societe as well as its ancestors and spirits. As in honor of Papa Loco, a son and as a way is permitted and encouraged to initiate others and to find and to found his or her own house, found his or her house. Oh my goodness, I cannot talk. And so the Asogwe um, Mambo or Hugan Asogwe is, is consecrated with the Papaloco sacred rattle. And they are permitted and encouraged to start their own temple, basically. No way I couldn't say that. And then the Buru House of Societe, the non Asoe lineage, she talks about that, and the Decad Budu, and some others, and it's just the console and all of that. The first, and she talks, about some of the the appendix is actually very useful for those that that don't speak Creole because you know like when I was trying to find things here like when I was trying to find things like um like I I couldn't get it in Spanish and I had to like come here sometimes and see if I could find it here and sometimes I did find it here so you can you can use it as a as a dictionary too for if you you know it's not that much but it's better than nothing like when i was trying to back then when i didn't know in spanish a point a point and i'm like what the heck is a point i had to research so much and then i had you know i was having a lot of dreams hearing a lot but i couldn't figure out what was a point because um i was looking for it in spanish and then i realized okay this has to be creole 
so that's how i found it so just i recommend it i don't want to make this any longer so this is the haitian buru by mambo Chitatang. i love that name um you know I, I just love this book um you know she is she did her job she went to haiti she did her study she you know i have a lot of respect for her because a lot of the things that she says here is information that i was getting in the dreams that i can confirm in trances and dreams so definitely highly recommend it and i'll see you guys on the next one thank you is it is on amazon by the way all right guys thank you